guys, welcome to Joe's Game of Photography uh, and the first edition of JSP Connect. Uh, JSP Connect is something um, I'm setting up this year, just basically a series of video blogs um, from here in the UK. Um, simply because I've got such a nice, exciting year, full of weddings, um, some really interesting um, projects on. So what I wanted to do was rather than just be posting pictures, I thought I may as well post some video um, and hopefully it'll help somebody else. Um, the reason for this first one is I'm lucky enough to have a destination wedding um, to the Bahamas next week. Um, I've driven my friends and family mad about it, so uh, it's now it's time to put it on the internet. Um, basically, it's been a bit of a logistical nightmare, simply because from the UK over to there, it's, um, it's a long way and there's two flights. So obviously getting all my gear out there, making sure, um, you know, all the logistics of, of the insurance and the itinerary and making sure that all the baggage goes through fine and everything. Um, I've just learned so much um, and since I've been posting details about this on Facebook um, and on my blog, um, a lot of people have been emailing asking um, you know, how I've gone about doing certain parts because um, as I understand quite a few people have got interesting projects like this on this year and you know, I figured why not let other people know um, you know how I've gone about it. It isn't a definitive one-on-one. -on -one. I'm not saying it's the, it's the right way to do it. It's just the way I've done it. And if uh, someone can learn from a few of my mistakes, then uh, it's definitely a good thing. Um, so what I'm going to do is it's in two parts. First part, I'm just going to go through all the paperwork details and all the sort of important aspects um, that you need to consider when going to shoot abroad. And then also um, I'll go through um, what gear I'm taking as well. Um, so, first of all is your, your passport, obviously, make sure your passport's in date, um, but also take a photocopy of your passport um, with you in your bag or on you in person, you know, just so you've got another another um, piece of evidence like that, and usually just take your driving licence or whatever uh, with you as well, um, just to be on the safe side so you've got some ID. Um, in terms of baggage, now baggage is a bit of a problem. Um, with where I'm going because I've got two flights basically, I've got a nine hour long haul um, and then I've got about a 40 minute transfer. Now the luggage allowance on the 40 minutes transfer is considerably less than the main flight and you've got to be aware of that. Don't just presume that because you're going on a British Airways or an American Airways flight long haul you're going to be allowed to take on the same baggage um, on a small flight because you're not. Um, majority of them follow in international guidelines but some of them are are different so just be aware of that. Um, ways to sort of avoid any hassle at the airport, um, you know, what I've basically done and some of this information is from Chase Jarvis uh, online. If you Google Chase Jarvis, he's he's um, a sports and action photographer um, and he does he does a lot of stuff um, you know worldwide and does a lot of travelling with gear. Um, some of this advice I've got of his his blog posts so um, you know check him out as well he's got some really good details on there. Um, first thing I suggest is the, the TSA, the Transport Security Administration, they've got a website um, and they basically outline what you should be allowed to take in terms of photography gear on, i.e. one bag of photography equipment in addition to one carry-on and one personal item. Now, again, this is great, but for me, as it turns out, um, British Airways have a different view on this. Um, you're allowed one carry-on um, at X dimensions and one piece of luggage you can obviously buy more but you know trying to avoid um, excess baggage costs here so you know what I've done is it's worth taking a copy and printing this out and just keeping it with you um, and also with your British Airways or with whoever you, you fly with um, make sure you print out their policies um, of, of your airline line allowance with you um, and what, what I'd advise is put a copy of this into your luggage and also keep a copy of it with you just so that if anything happens or there's any discrepancies, pull it out. No, hold on, this is what it says. Um, and the other thing as well is if it's in your luggage, when they're checking through your luggage, they see it, they know you know. So, you know, it's going to avoid um, them trying to take the mick, basically. Um, the other thing to take with you is your hotel details, obviously. Um, Sometimes when you're going to another country, you need to provide details of where you're going to be able to, where you're going to be staying, just to make sure that you don't overstay, uh, etc. So always make sure you've got those details with you. And the other thing I suggest, which um, I follow similar similar advice, I follow similar advice when um, I'm in the UK, 
is if you're working away from home, try and get a hotel, either the same hotel as the bridal party, the bride and groom, or somewhere near. Um, I know sometimes cost is an issue with that. Simply because, and it's more, it's more appropriate when you're travelling abroad, is communication is the key with weddings, as you, as you know. And if you are abroad, nine times out of ten, you know, there's a phone issue or there's people aren't picking up their emails because it's near the wedding or something like that. So just make sure that you um, you are in close proximity to what everything everything that's going on. Just make sure you don't miss anything. If there's change of plans, you know, you can deal with it. Um, in terms of how I'm getting my gear out there, I'll go through my luggage in a little bit, but what I'm basically taking is I'm taking a, a think tank carry-on, which is internationally approved carry-on airline luggage um, to hold the majority of my gear. Some of my gear, unfortunately, is going to have to go in the hole as well because because I'm shooting a wedding, I always take two camera bodies just in case, but I'm also filming video, so I need a certain amount of video gear with me. So that's going to have to go um, in the hole as well. Um, but what I've done is um, I've got a, a 1550 Pelly case that's going to go in the hole. But what I would recommend with something like a Pelly case is it screams photographer. No matter how much you sort of try and hide it, it's going to look like it's got something expensive in and you, you run the risk of it going missing. So what I'd say is always put your Pelly case inside another, you know, roll of luggage bag or something. Um, I'm actually trying to get that into my main luggage and just take some less clothes with me just to try and avoid any um, additional baggage costs. Um, I'm going to see how that, that goes because uh, there's quite a lot of gear to fit in. Um, so yeah, just you know, hide your gear. You know, my roller think tank roller bag. You know, it's got a think tank brand on it, and if people know what they're looking for, then they'll see it. But other than that, it doesn't look like a photography bag. It looks like any other carry on. Um, Carry on as much camera stuff as you can get away with. Obviously, weight is an issue. If you're shooting full frame and you've got big lenses, big cameras, you know, carrying that on is sometimes an issue. I know for a fact I'm overweight, which is why some of it's going to have to go into the hold. Um, but yeah, just the more gear you can carry with you, the less chance um, of damage, obviously. Um, but with a Pelly case, it's all foam inside, you know, it's pretty well supported. Um, the other thing, as well, is um, the advantage of me not having enough weight is I'm splitting my gear. Because it's such a long way, I don't want to turn up at the other end. One of my bags go missing and have no equipment with me. This way, I've got a carry-on with some equipment in, you know, enough to do the job. I've got the whole luggage with enough to do the job. So either way, I'm okay. I can still go and shoot that wedding. I can't go halfway across the world and not be able to shoot that person's wedding. It's you know, you've got a responsibility to be able to do the job you've you've been sent there for. Um, in terms of insurance, obviously. A lot of airlines don't insure for full professional equipment. What I'd say is you should have insurance anyway for your gear, um, you know, if you're professional. But um, I've also got worldwide insurance um, for any of my gear, also public indemnity and public liability. But in terms of your gear, make sure you've got worldwide insurance. It's so important. Um, you know, if something happens to your gear and you're not covered, you're going to be absolutely gutted. Um, in terms of what you're going to do out there, luckily I've got a couple of days to myself while um, I'm out there before I have to fly back. So I've done myself a bit of an itinerary. Um, you know, uh, in the Bahamas there's quite a few islands. I'm hoping to go and visit them and stuff um, and shoot some stock photography while I'm out there. Uh, I'm also going to try and do a bit of underwater photography, which I've never done before. Um, so just because time's tight and also because you might not have internet, you might not have a printer, make sure you get your itinerary, you get all the local details printed and take that with you. Um, just to make sure you've got that info. Um, as I was saying with splitting the cameras up, just make sure you, you've got double of everything. Um, it might be a little bit excessive, but again, you can't take that risk of not being able to do the job. So what I, you know, your memory cards, make sure your memory cards, some in your hold, some in your hand luggage. Um, same as your chargers, make sure you've got a charger in your hold, charger in your hand luggage. Um, you just, just so that whatever bag, if anything goes missing, if one of the bags goes missing, you can still do the job. Um, weigh, weigh your bag, it's what I'd advise you, weigh your bag before you go to the airport. Um, you know, obviously you've printed all your documents out, you're aware of what like, uh, baggage allowance you, you've got. Um, I've got a little hand weigher, um, which is specifically for luggage. If you clip it around your bag and you lift it up, you can basically see how much the weigh is. Uh, there's two reasons for that. One, so there's, you get through the airport quicker, um, you know, there's no nasty surprises. But also, if you are massively overweight and you know you're going to be overweight, 
there's very often um, the option to pay for additional weight or additional baggage online before you get to the airport and it's usually a lot cheaper than doing it at the check-in so um, you know you save yourself a bit of cash doing that. Um, in terms of credit cards, um, I defy you, if, you can, if you've got one or if you can get one, take a credit card with you um, just in case something happens with your cash. Um, if you can ideally take a Visa and a MasterCard because obviously some countries don't accept one or don't accept the other, it's just going to save you a lot of hassle and it's you know going to give you a fallback plan if something happens with your money. Um, the last thing is your charges. Now, in terms of voltage, it differs from country to country. In Europe, you're fine, but um, as I found, obviously going to North, uh, Northern America, Bahamas, the voltage is I think it's 110 as opposed to 240 we have in the UK. Um, a lot of your actual um, charges will be fine. If you look on the back, um, it's got um, an input info section and this for example this Nikon charger says 100 to 240 volts now that means that if I'm using the right converter for the country which I've got here plug this in using a normal UK 3 pin plug it'll be fine it'll charge it'll work because this thing here is converting for you there are some appliances um, I know for a fact my AA battery charger for example um, won't convert because it's just got 240 on the back in which case, unfortunately, you'll need to take one of these. Now, this um, this is a converter, and it weighs an absolute ton. Um, I'm going to do my very best to try and avoid not taking this. Um, I've got very limited um, appliances that I'm taking that that don't have, um, you know, a voltage converter built in. Um, the, things like the batteries, for example, I'm just going to take a load of AA batteries, uh, non non rechargeable, and just chuck them while I'm there. Uh, that way I can avoid taking the charger and stuff. Um, so I hope this helps. If you've got any more questions or any comments, please leave leave them on the blog. Um, I'll show you my equipment next uh, and just run through what I'm taking with me. Hi guys, I'm just going to go through the um, equipment that I'm taking with me for this uh, destination wedding. Um, I'm aware I waffled on a bit earlier with the logistical stuff, so I'm going to make this as quick as possible. Um, so let's start with the carry-on. This is uh, Think Tank Airport Takeoff. Uh, great bag, really well made. Um, <coughs> feels really strong and safe, really well padded inside. Um, at the front it's got um, quite a big uh, pocket for your laptop. I think it takes up to a 17-inch MacBook Pro. Um, Mine's 15 inch, it'll go in here absolutely fine. Beauty of this is you can just whip it, whip your laptop out, put it through airport security, uh, and put it back in without having to go into your main bag, and um, just makes things a lot easier. Uh, it's also got a lock in here if you case you want to bolt the bag uh, to anything stationary for security reasons. Um, the good thing about this bag is it is a roller bag, um, and it looks pretty similar to a normal roller bag, so. You know, anyone who's got a lot of camera gear knows that lugging it around isn't fun. Um, and if you've got flat surfaces like round airports and round cities and towns, you know it's perfect for that. <clears throat> the main reason why I bought this bag as well was um, knowing what I'm doing. I've, I've, you know, the Bahamas is quite quite a lot of small islands, so I'm going to be doing quite a bit of island hopping. And my accommodation's on one island, the wedding's on another. Hopefully I'll be hopping between a few others as well when I'm off uh, having a scout. So um, this has actually got handles built in as well, and unlike a lot of them, they're actually very good. Um, they're really well padded. Um, you know, probably wear this all day, and it wouldn't really hurt you back too much. Um, okay, so let's have a look at what I've got inside. Inside here, I've got you know basic um, batteries, cables, chargers, and stuff. Um, one of my main bodies, uh, D700 with a 24-70 lens on, uh, f2.8. Um, great camera, great lens. Um, the other camera I'm going to be putting in this is um, the D5100 which is actually recording this. Um, it's not a pro body uh, and I don't use it for stills for weddings but you know with a bit of video um, I'm hoping to try and play with while I'm out there. Um, it's perfect for that so that's going to go in here, whip it out and do a bit of documentary stuff while I'm out there. Um, I'm also hoping to do a uh, tutorial while I'm out there, landscape photography tutorial so that's perfect for that sort of thing. Um, the other thing I've got in here is a Black Rapid um, dual camera harness, which will basically mean I can carry two cameras at once. Great for weddings, nothing hanging around my neck, um, invaluable. Um, SB900s, 
SB 800s, uh, speed lights, um, perfect for lighting the room up, you know, as, as I'm sure you know, and also great for some off-camera stuff. Um, Nikon's creative lighting system is really good for that sort of thing. Um, charges, batteries, business cards, um, and gaffer tape. You know, make sure you've got gaffer tape. You never know when you're going to need it. You can stick anything to anything. Uh, the other thing I've got in here is some landscape filters. Got some um, big stoppers and some ND grads and stuff, uh, just for to balance the light out. And uh, hopefully, I'm going to be having a bit of a play on the beaches um, for sunrise and sunset if I get some time. So that's mainly what's going in that. And as I said before, I'm having to split my camera gear up mainly because of weight, um, but also um, just to give me that fail safe that if one of the bags doesn't arrive or if something goes missing, I've still got enough gear to shoot. Um, so in my main luggage, I'm taking a Peli 1550. Um, it's past its best, this, but you know it's perfect. And like I said before, this is going in another bag. So it's not going to look like a pillowcase, case, it's not going to look like camera gear, it's going to be hidden um, you know, with my clothes and stuff. So in here, <clears throat> I've basically got space for the mic, for the main mic, the uh, 5100 at the moment, what you can hear me on is um, an external mic, so that's going on there. Um, I've got my D3 um, and my 70-200mm in here. Obviously they're the two most heaviest kit pieces of kit I've got really. Um, and if anything were to happen to this, I've still got a full frame body, I've still got my primes and I've still got my 2470, you know, I'll be absolutely fine to cover a wedding with that, um, you know, worst comes to the worst. Um, that was my main concern really is, you know, if baggage goes missing, um, I, I'm still able to do my job. Okay, what else have we got? So, the camera that's filming me is the 5100, like I said, and that's on a carbon fibre tripod which I usually use for landscape photography because it's nice and light. Um, it's also got a video pan head on, which is obviously just for the video. Um, the other thing I've got is, um, I've just bought this especially, it's a tiny um, little man photo tripod. Um, it's pretty, uh, pretty flimsy to be honest, it wouldn't take the weight of, of a D3 or anything, any pro, a pro body of that size, but it's perfect for the 5100 just to you know, have some video on the go whilst I'm doing something else. Um, you know, if I'm shooting some landscapes on the beach and I want to video it as well as actually use the other tripod, it gives me that option. Okay, I've got one light stand here, I'm only taking one, um, shouldn't need any more than that. For a wedding I usually take a set of these, but um, you know, I haven't got the luxury of space. So I've got one um, quite small uh, light stand and a, an adapter to put the speed lights on, just to give me a bit of options for uh, creative lighting while I'm out there. 100mm um, macro, um, just to sort of, usually just for the ring shots. Um, 85mm 1.8 prime and a 50mm 1.8 prime. Um, relatively cheap lenses, but you know, still great lenses. Um, and it also means that if anything happens with any of the other lenses, we've got a backup. In terms of computer gear, I'm taking my 15-inch uh, MacBook Pro um, and my A4 whack on with me. Um, just create a little editing suite while I'm out there. Um, and obviously help me back up all my images on a daily basis. In terms of image backup, I've got two one terabyte rugged hard drives with me. So whatever's on my laptop will also be duped onto two of these. One will go into my main hold luggage on the way back and one will go into my carry-on. Again, just that extra added bit of security. Um, I do the same when I'm shooting weddings in the UK. You know, before I leave a wedding there's, there's at least three versions of everything. You know, you can't be too careful. Um, in terms of security, um, my memory cards are attached to me. Um, and then half of these, again, I've got more than enough, will go in the main luggage and some will go in the hold, um, just in case. Kind of be very cautious. Um, plug adapters, um, UK to America, because Bahamas have the same American plug adapter. Uh, the other thing as well I'm going to take is um, like a, an extension cord for gang, which you plug all your UK appliances in. Plug that into this, and then this will go into the wall. It just means I don't have to carry a hundred of these around with me. Um, you know, I can just line up all my UK stuff, plug them all in, and plug this into the wall, and it should work. Um, fingers crossed. I think that's about it. Oh, the other thing I've got is um, just a bit of fun, really. Is I bought this especially for this. Is I'm obviously it's beautiful out there, so I'm going to take my snorkel and mask with me. Um, and I bought this um, marine underwater casing for my camera. Um, it's one of the better ones. I didn't buy a cheap one. This this wasn't cheap. 
Um, but obviously I'm not going to be putting my D3 or my D700 in here. Um, this is just for the 5100, um, just to sort of have a play and take some underwater shots with it. Um, it's, uh, it's one of the better of the plastic bag types, but obviously weight and cost-wise, one of the hard cases, I just couldn't justify it. Um, so that's that. That's everything. So yeah, thanks for listening. Um, if you've got any questions or any comments, leave, leave them on the blog or uh, give me a shout. Um, I hope it's been useful for somebody and I look forward to doing some more of these.